I have replaced countless Calendly subscriptions for my clients. And if you're paying for Go High Level, there is no reason you should be paying with Calendly. However, there's a couple of things you need to do in order to get the same performance out of GHL as you do Calendly. Admittedly, Calendly isn't too bad. If you're using it as a standalone platform, you're more than within your right to use it. However, if you're already paying for GHL, then it is something you should look at migrating across your GHL account so you're saving money. I was using Calendly personally before I started using Go High Level. To be fair, it did the job and I didn't really have any issues with it. However, it became a issue when I integrated GHL and I didn't really have the functionality around booking appointments and scheduling inside Go High Level without using an external connector like Zapier. So for me, it became a bad solution. So I looked for an alternative and I realized Go High Level's native calendar function wasn't too bad for my agency, but when I started onboarding other clients, it was kind of a little bit finicky to like show the right link and stuff like that. And if my client was sending out a calendar link, it would say like knock on automation, which is my white label version of GHL. So jumping into a test account here in Go High Level, and there's a few things we need to consider when we're actually creating our calendar to replace Calendly. And that's SMS reminders. It is a scheduling interface that's nice to use and having a pulse of all your future booked appointments. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a calendar. And we can do that by going into settings and then calendar and clicking new calendar. Now we're going to create some calendars in GHL. So I'm going to use a, a simple calendar. The reason I'm not using round robin, which is what I would normally use for everything, is this account doesn't have any users in it. So I'm just going to hit select in simple calendar. And we're just going to call it testing cal. And for all intensive purposes, this is going to be perfectly fine for actually building our Calendly alternative. So we're going to just name this testing cal. The meeting duration is 30 minutes. Availability is Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And then the meeting location is Zoom. I'm just going to press confirm after I do this. Testing, Cal, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we get this link here. Now, if this was for my agency, it would be totally fine, right? Because it's link.knockoutonautomation.com. However, if this is my client, this wouldn't change. And there's no way to actually change that, uh, which is kind of frustrating. So... If, if you haven't white labeled go high level, uh, it will just say go high level.com. And again, can't be changed unless you rename your whole agency, but we're going to preview the calendar and it just shows like this, right? So already very similar to Calendly. However, there's some things that I change up to make it look a bit nicer. Cause if you just sent this to a client, it would look pretty unprofessional. So the first thing I actually do is I create a web page or a funnel page to host the calendar. Now, the reason I do this is it adds an element of professionalism when you're actually sending out that link to prospects, to the clients, whoever is getting the actual booking calendar, it looks a lot better if it's got their logo. So I'm gonna set that up really quickly and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the really simple template that I use. I use the logo at the top and the calendar. So if I select this calendar here and select testing calendar, it's gonna come up. And then if I put a image in here and let's see if this account has any images on it, which it doesn't. Let's just find a random image. Let's do Stripe. So if this was a Stripe booking calendar, <laughs> which is an interesting thing to do, uh, I would make this a bit smaller. So probably about 300. And I would add in a small subheading that says, find a time that suits below. And then we're going to save that and we're just going to view it really quick. And it just looks like this, right? So obviously the blue matches the Stripe logo. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry, I'm colorblind, but it allows you to match the colors and, and make it look pretty good. Now this calendar widget can be customized so you can change these colors and like change what it looks like a little bit, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a new feature from Go High Level. However, this is pretty simple in what it does. Now, the that's the first step. And the second is actually setting up reminders for booked appointments. This is something that Calendly actually does really well. And I wanted to bring that across to GHL. And we can do that using the Go High Level Automations function. All right, we're back inside GHL and we're gonna go into automation on the left-hand side. Now we want this to run whenever a client books in a call. And we would probably wanna send multiple reminders to that person to ensure they actually do show up to the call. So we're going to go start from scratch. You can use one of these recipes here. However, I tend to start from scratch because I end up changing the recipe anyway. So I'm just gonna give it a really quick name. It's gonna be booking confirmation and reminder. So 
what we're going to do here for the trigger, it is going to be booked appointment. So it's going to be a uh, customer booked appointment. And then we're going to add a filter here. So if you have multiple calendars, you can filter out which calendar is actually going to trigger from. So this filter is in calendar testing Cal and we save. We're going to set our first step. So the first thing is always going to be for me, a confirmation SMS. Uh, thanks so much for booking in. Cool. And then we'll save action. What I'm going to do then is use the wait function. However, I'm going to do it a little bit differently to what I, a standard wait function would be. So instead of just doing like 30 minutes, uh, I'm going to change this. So instead of wait for time delay, I'm going to use event appointment time. Now, what this does is it takes the time and the time of the actual event and back works backwards from there. So you can say four hours up until the event time, uh, send this message or 24 hours before the event time, send this message. Uh, and the benefit of this is if that time has already passed, say for example, you have a sequence that it has a 24 hour reminder, an eight hour reminder and a one hour reminder, but the person has booked in two hours before their scheduled time, it will skip the previous two and just send anything between uh, now and the booking time and when they actually book. So that example, there's only one. So there's one reminder that's sent. So for this here, we would go until before the appointment, we want to say one day and we're going to save. So one day before the appointment, it is going to send this SMS. Uh, can't wait to chat in 24 hours. And we're going to just do the same thing again. So another wait step and it's going to be event time before. And we're going to say eight hours before save action. This time we might send an email, which will be from Matt. And I just like to do this here. So Matt knock on automation.com, whatever your client sets up for their domain to send their emails in the first place is what this will send from. Um, if you don't have a dedicated sender, I'm pretty sure it will send from gohighlevel.com um, or your white labeled uh, version. So subject is going to be test testing and then type a message can't wait to chat here is the zoom link now if we'd done this via a round robin like i was going to and didn't then we would be able to go into custom values here which allows us to use universal placeholders and then go appointment and then go meeting location and that will actually populate the zoom link right so this will send and we'll save that action and sends a zoom link and then that's pretty much good to go we'll save that and now whenever this runs whenever this triggers this automation will run by default um, if we hit publish so that's published and now it'll anytime someone books in they will get an sms and a email and another sms before the actual appointment now i guess the final step of this is making sure that it's on a custom domain now the reason that you would do this is is just another level of professionalism if your client uh <laughs> mount franklin water Dot com has a calendar that is mountfranklinwater.com forward slash book a call. It's a lot more professional than that simple lead connector link that's given. So inside of Go High Level, you would go into domains and then type in your client's domain. Com. You would add that in and make sure you uh, successfully do this before you try and attach the calendar to it. And then you would go back and go back into sites and then go calendar funnel and then find the funnel page that you created and then settings and then you would select the domain under here. Then your final result is being able to have a calendar that is set up for your clients that they can then send on to their clients that doesn't have any ugly branding. It doesn't have any weird like URLs that look a bit spammy, it looks nice and professional, and it is able to set them apart from potentially their competitors.